What is going on, everybody? Welcome into another edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up here on this gorgeous Thursday, August 17th, 2023. As always, I'm your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, coming to you from an undisclosed location here in Dallas, Texas. Joined by the executive producer of the show, the purveyor of the show, the director and publisher of the world's greatest website, energynewsbeat.com, Stuart Turley. My man, how are we doing today? It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Hey, I've been having some great conversations with people from around the world today. No, you have you have been you've been flying all around the world. We're about to fly all around the world for this show today, guys. Great menu lined up. First up, Duke Energy Files, IRP, propane gas, nuclear, and renewables permitting. Um, Stu will cover what's going on there with Duke Energy and in South Carolina. Then we're gonna stay home and talk about the inflation reduction act. This one is titled One Year Later, Inflation Reduction Act Implementation Remains a Mess which is a complete shock to the show. And uh, I'll be interested to hear. No! That's about hey, it's that. not so! <laughs> Next up, uh, we have an opinion piece. Wake up, America! Our climate policies are a catastrophe in the making. Um, this is a breakdown of, of, of some of the stuff, what's going on. I'm excited to, to have Stu dive into this opinion piece. And then finally, another uh, opinion piece. Don't be fooled, folks. China's investment in renewables is not about net zero. It is about preparing for war with the United States. As always, Stu brings the fire and the doom and gloom. So um, we'll be talking uh, eventual uh, nuclear war with China. So I can't wait for that segment. Um, Stu's then going to kick it over to me. I'll quickly cover what happened in the oil and gas markets today. Um, quickly at then cover two things that I saw on the finance side. One, EQT, go ahead and actually was clear to close their Tug Hill acquisition um, right. by the FTC. We'll dive into a little bit of what that regulatory mess looked like. Um, and then on the backside, we'll cover quickly energy transfer. They go out and buy Equity or Crestwood Equity Partners. That's a 7.1 all equity deal. Gets them into a new market. So kind of break down what that looks like. And then we'll let you get on out of here and finish up your Thursday. We appreciate you guys sticking with us through on this long week. Before we dive into all that, guys, all of the stories you're about to hear, all the analysis you're about to hear is uh, courtesy World's Greatest Website, www.energynewsbeat.com. You can head out the description below, see the links to all of the articles. It's really the best place for all of your energy news. You can check us out at dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. It's our uh, latest data product, kind of doing a little data news combo in an effort to kind of streamline that. So check that out, dashboard.energynewsbeat.com. Team's hard at work at V2. Um also, check us out, um, questions at energynewsbeat.com. You can get in contact with the show. You can find Stu and I on LinkedIn. Uh, pack show, Stu, where do you want to begin? Well, let's start with my uh, one of my favorite energy companies, Duke Energy. Uh, yes, sir. Duke, love me some Duke, man. They are good people. Uh, Duke Energy files IRP, proposes gas, mm -hmm. nuclear, and renewables. Where do you think I like this one? Huh? They're going all in, dude. There's some stats in here that are pretty wild. Um, let's take a look here. Over the next 15 year, electric use by Duke Energy customers in the Carolinas is projected to surge by around 35,000 gigawatt hours, more than the annual electrician uh, electrical generation of Delaware, Maine, and New Hampshire combined wow holy smokes mike callahan says we're preparing for this growth extraordinary growth in energy demand by prioritizing grid responsibility energy affordably and the deployment of diverse range of energy options you know how they're doing it getting rid of cold rolling out natural gas beefing up their nuclear and then rolling in when they can, the renewables. Wow, what a great plan. I, I, I was, I'm trying to come up with a way to not like this, but I absolutely love this. I think it's great. And the only way to get to carbon net zero and have a good environment, elevate people out of poverty is use all forms of energy, and have the least amount of impact on the environment, and they are doing it. Let me give you some quotes here. According to the release, Duke Energy Carolinas owns 19,000 megawatts of energy capacity, supplying to 2.8 million residential and industrial. 
as soon as you start throwing EVs on this bad dog, you're going to need more than the 5,000 gigawatts. Yeah. Uh, they uh, Duke Energy Progress owns 12,000 megawatts uh, to 1.7 million. That's just uh, that's some big numbers, man. Yeah, I mean, all of these these large power companies, they've got their own subsidiaries that they claim own. It's 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 it all gets wrapped up into that big Duke umbrella. But no, again, I was trying to find something about this plan. I hate I like it. I even like the name integrated resource plan. I mean, they're they they understand. And whoever wrote this, the folks over at Duke, they're smart. They understand that a mix of the three allows for each of the negatives to be offset by positives of the other. You know, I'm over here going all energy and and here's Duke energy. And you've heard me say a lot. I love me some Duke. Um, What's next? Let's go to the next one. This is with my favorite administration I've ever had. And uh, one year later, the inflation reduction act implementation remains a mess. (laughs) Did you see Biden? Uh, I'm just going to sidetrack here for a sec. Did you see Biden last week when he said, maybe we shouldn't have called it the Inflation Reduction Act because it's not going to do it? He actually said it. You got to love that. I, I mean, see that, but, oh. he had a momentary like re- relapse of sanity. Today marks the one year anniversary of signing the inflation, the IRA into law. The, the, the law was never about reducing inflation. The IRA is a quintessential example of the Democrats' vision, and it is basically the Green New Deal hidden in wolf's clothes. Uh, Let's take through some of this stuff. This is is by economist James Brogel. Um, his, His title is, I am an economist focused on economics of regulation. Well, have fun without this one, dude. Oh yeah, he's he's worse than a CPA or an accountant. I mean, this guy's got to be fun at a party just to avoid. Um, based on initial estimates, uh, 260 billion in energy tax credits for renewables like wind, solar, hydro. 80 billion for consumer mm-hmm. rebates for purchasing electric vehicles. Hold that thought. I'm coming back to it in a sec. Installing rooftop solar panels and adding more efficient home features. The IRA amends a tax credit up to 7,500 for purchasing electric vehicles and extended another up to 30% off the cost of solar. Let's talk about this for just a second. Out of all of the $1.3 trillion in the uh, Porculus bill that I love Dan Bongino for saying that, it is the Porculus bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. The $7,500 tax credit is very not used by very many American cars. You got to like, you've got to be a really good rocket scientist to get that payment. Now, here's the other side of that coin. South Korea, uh, yesterday, yesterday or day before, they announced they have found a way around the U.S. policies on this. So they're going to be selling under the Inflation Reduction Act. Our own folks can't. South Korea is going to be muscling on our money. So this one kind of just gets me off. Did you see they had to bring John Podesta back for this? They had to recycle that guy from the grave. And who's John Podesta? John Podesta is the guy that got caught in the WikiLeaks phishing scam who ended up giving up all of the documents to WikiLeaks. Remember, how did WikiLeaks get those documents? Somebody hacked Hillary Clinton's emails. Well, what did they actually do? As it turns out, this person got access to the emails through John Podesta's email, which he subscribed through through a phishing scam. So, actually, we love the dude. Oh, yeah. Um, Prevented a crisis in 2016. Um, already this is later on in the article, it says, uh, already parts of the IRA are backfiring, which could further erode support countries like South Korea. I just told you that, uh, in there, the IRA massive industrial policy cronyism is masquerading as climate and inflation policy. Um, you know, what's missing. They only had 38 million I mean, it was some ungodly little number yeah. for the grid. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, oh, oh, I just got air sick when I was reading that part of it. Well, let's All let's right. bring you back let's, down to earth. We got to come back to America. We're okay. gonna stay I'm here gonna in America. Our, I'm gonna ask our producer here to do me a favor on this one. Wake up, America. Our climate policies are catastrophic in the making. Uh, Miss Producer, could you bring this picture in and fly it in? And I want to ask you, Michael, for our podcast lister, we have President Biden wearing a hat, his Ray-Ban, you know, his pilot Ray-Bans. We have yeah, yeah. Governor Newsom, uh, and it looks like he's got a shiny suit on his, his suit. It is literally perfect. looks like Biden Jr. It does. Hunter, but what else does it look like? It They're sitting on a bench. They're looking in the bag. It says historic climate action, and it's in an open farm field. Go figure this one out. I I think it looks like Forrest Gump sitting on a on a bench, and you got Forrest Gump and his younger brother Dope, and they're sitting there. I'm waiting for the 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 uh, feather to come flying in. You know, this is Forrest Gump on steroids. All right, let's go back to the story. Um. The Senate hearing, uh, let's say, one, the United States is currently responsible for only 13% of the carbon emissions, and we cannot control what China, India, and other countries do. It will cost an estimated $50 trillion to decarbonize the U.S. by 2050. What do I always say, Stu? What's a couple trillion between friends? Three years, Michael, you and I were talking, what's a couple billion between friends? Holy smokes, it only took three years of printing money to now go, what's a few exactly. trillion? Three, well, really since since 2008, but yes, you're right. Uh, you know, okay. Uh, the grand delusion here, the first that electric vehicles will save the planet. No. Uh, flushing yeah. down the toilet. 650 million of stockholder money, 6.5 billion of government grants, and 45,000 of subsidies for every bus it sold. This <laughs> 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 is ridiculous. A part, uh, a part of uh, an electric bus um, parts uh, company and an electric bus company just go bankrupt. So when uh, Vice President um, Kamala goes in, the wheels on the bus go oh, round and round. round. I like my bus. Yeah. I like an electric bus. Well, they're now bankrupt and they're they're going away. So anyway, okay, let's just go to Speaking the Speaking of the eventual bankruptcy, let's talk about China. Okay, we're going on here. Uh, China, don't be fooled. China's investment in the renewables is not about net zero. It's about preparing for war with the United States. This article will pucker you up. Okay, there's a pucker factor. Of about, yeah, yeah, there's about a 90% you're going to get puckered. The first half of this article, I'm not going to cover very much. Although the, the author does a great job talking about Russia, Germany, and World War II. Ukraine was a big deal in there and not much change between then and now the same people are hating everybody except all the german nazis moved to ukraine have you seen all that we'll just leave that alone moving right along here so let's go down here to uh sure it's like the six or seven paragraph yep, sure i see it here uh is installing so much wind and solar that it could power the entirety of the uk grid so it's true that every third car in China is EV. Here's the gotcha. They're requiring so much energy just to keep the peasants, I mean the citizens, uh, into power that everything that they can bring in on renewable energy is actually additional power that's needed. They're not retiring any coal plants. They're still building two coal plants a week. Uh, I'm serious. This yeah, they're yes. bringing them online. Larger than the rest of the world combined seems to be a common metric when you're talking about in, uh, China's energy. Uh, what, let's come in here. They are using their manufacturing, their coal manufacturing to build solar, yep. 
and wind, and they're taking the profits to that. They're selling it to the rest of the world. The rest of the world is printing money so that we can give it to China. Um, and then they're going to take all. I mean, this is like, you know, Michael and I are over here doing some Scooby Doo. I mean, but you're going left, right, left, right. But no, it's oh, all absolutely. this big circle to where they're admitting they're not cutting their emissions, they're just doubling down on it. They're tripling down because by the time the fourth order of magnitude of uh, emissions, fourth order, fourth, or going eighth order. So, I mean, this is like ridiculous. Policy makers in the West should not believe their own propaganda and realize that outside of Brussels and Washington bubble, climate change is an efficient propaganda tool for the Chinese but not the main motivation of their energy policy. Okay. I talked about this earlier in the week. President Xi stood up and go, uh, no climate change for China, because he says it's not efficient. He backed out of the yes. Paris Accords, and Trump backed out of the Paris Accords, and the reason Trump did, he, he, loves, the, he loves the environment, but he backed out because he said nobody else is paying for it. He says, I'll come back in when they're paid for. President Z, he doesn't care. He is like the soup Nazi. He is at, you know, no soup for you out of, out of Seinfeld. He is actually the renewable Nazi. Yeah. Uh, no, no renewable for China. Well, so, he knows he knows the economics work when you're selling it, not using it. I mean, it, it, it simply that, comes down to it. He understands the economics of renewables. That's some scary stuff, though. Anyway. It was a fun show tonight. It was. Um, uh, we'll quickly cover oil and gas, uh, uh, the finance side of things, guys. Uh, markets were down about uh, uh, three or uh, seventy-five basis points, um, or uh, seventy uh, three quarters of a percentage point. Excuse me, forty-four oh four. Natural or uh, oil did tumble. We just opened the day somewhere around eighty-one, eighty-two dollars, um, sitting seventy-two. Uh, or 79.22, excuse me. Main reason for that is just as we talk about China, there is a growing concern that China is entering. And, and part of what Stu left out of his analysis of what's going on in China is the fact that there could be entering a large economic recession. There has been rumors leaked today. Part of the reason why our stock market was down and the NASDAQ was down even more at about a percentage point was the fact that it was leaked today that China has been going around to its largest invest, its largest headsman and telling them not to sell, expect that a market sell-off could ensue very shortly. So we, we are integrated with China more than we can imagine, and what goes on there affects us here. That's it's affecting oil. It's affecting the overall markets. Um, natural gas, we saw $2.60, even as it trades right now. Stu, so there's two interesting deals that happened today. Uh, first off, EQT, I wouldn't say this is a deal, but we heard from the FTC that EQT can officially close its transit acquisition of Tug Hill and XL Midstream. This was under review by the FCT, mainly to make sure that they um, agreed with the Hart Scott Redindo Act of 1976, which basically sets and, and applies to how um, uh, much monopoly power certain areas can have. And, you know, EQT with this acquisition was was attempting to, you know, slip by this it's going to be difficult to see how they can get more acquisitions if they're already at this level which i didn't think was necessarily a right. a a outright blatant you know disregard for the for, for, for the hart scott act which is which is normally normally called you know it, it, it's close but it's it's nowhere near some of the stuff that that, that you know the the, the the u.s is using right now or the fcc is using right now after microsoft and its purchase of activision things you know, of I, I thought that that act actually in this deal was being held up so that pelosi could invest and yes. then and then make the pelosi dollar it was so this that's exactly what it is the harden scott redindo pelosi act of 2022 where you hold it in regulatory capture for a while so you can you can put your longs on it to give you guys an idea guys tug hill and xl midstream those are quantum energy partners so a little little pe making some money um we also saw a midstream deal um energy transfer goes out and swipes up crestwood equity partners for 1.7 billion all equity deal though so fairly interesting um paid a little bit more of a premium for that um to give you guys an idea this gives energy transfer access uh or gives it more extended coverage in both montana and north dakota there in that williston basin also they've got some west texas and new mexico stuff there in permian basin they also get 
access to their first time in Wyoming Powder River Basin. You know, to give you guys an idea, they have about 2 billion feet of gathering capacity per day and about 3,400 or uh, 340,000 barrels of crude oil capacity. Both stocks are trading up 2 and 5% um, for energy transfer and Crestwood. So not necessarily the deal I think we were expecting to see made, but an M&A deal nonetheless. And I think it'll be very interesting to see um, what happens there. They go ahead and assume the $3.3 billion in debt uh, rolled over from Crestwood. Um, to give you an idea, Crestwood's going to own about 6% of energy transfer um, when it's all said and done. All right, Stu, um, you know, we, we, you know, Friday, you're going to hear um, one of our long, who, who we got coming out on Friday for the podcast? Uh, we have Ronald Stein, and uh, it's a heck of a book. Uh, it, it, yep. I really enjoy all my podcasts, but Clean Energy, releasing Friday, it is a fantastic book. The guy knows what he's talking about. Um, also, uh, next week and the week after, uh, Bricks is meeting. So uh, 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 there's going to be some more information coming down on bricks, but we've we've been on the front edge of that. But it's something to like panic on. With yeah, that, no, it's <laughs> it's it just makes me squeal. So well, with that, guys, we're gonna have to let you get out of here, get back to work, finish up your Thursday. We appreciate you guys sticking with us. Take a look for Ronald Stein on the podcast um, Friday, and then our weekly recap will be on Saturday, and we will see you guys back here on Monday. So have a great weekend, guys.